So for about four years of my life, I struggled pretty intensely with food and body image. And at one point, I was working with a coach who was helping me to heal my relationship to food. And during one of our weekly phone calls, she said to me, Kyla, one day this week, I want you to go out, dress up, do your hair and makeup, and treat yourself to a really luxurious eating experience. Now, when my coach first suggested this to me, I was happy that we were on the phone so she couldn't see me rolling my eyes at her. I didn't really know what dressing up was supposed to do to keep me from stressing out about eating, but I followed her directions anyway. I picked out the nicest bakery I could find in San Diego. I put on a way too fancy dress, and I wore my hair down, which I rarely used to do because I had this idea that my hair was too much and too big and taking up too much space in the world, which is similar to how I felt about my body and myself at the time. But I went to this bakery, I ordered my dessert, and just as I was leaving, this nice couple stopped me. They said to me, I'm sorry, we've been staring at you since you walked in here. Your hair is so gorgeous. That color, the texture, do you have any idea how beautiful it is? You need to own it, seriously, own it. I turned bright red, said thank you, and walked out. And it wasn't until months later that the impact of this interaction sank into me. I realized that I could choose to love my hair for what it was. Not perfect, but mine. And that this same type of love was transferable to every part of who I am. This realization has completely changed the way I view my relationship to myself and was a major, major turning point for me in healing from one of the most painful times of my life. But I don't tell this story to make a point about self-love, but rather to highlight the idea that maybe you have been a catalyst for someone in some way beyond your immediate understanding. I continue to relive this story and think about the unnecessary kindness that these two people expressed that day and how easily they could have kept that to themselves. They could have decided it felt too weird to talk to a perfect stranger or that I was probably in a rush and they didn't want to bother me or that they were going to look stupid, but instead they chose to be expressive about what they felt compelled to share in that moment. And in doing so, they unknowingly gave a perfect stranger the unwritten permission she needed that day to be who she was. This moment didn't transform me simply because I got to feel good about my hair that day. It rearranged my understanding of what leadership can look like. These were two people who simply decided to speak up and they have nothing short but changed my life because of it. I don't know who these people are. I wouldn't even recognize them if I saw them again. And that's why this interaction was so powerful for me because it made me realize that we are all leading one another in ways that we are totally unaware of. Leadership is what's happening even when we're not paying attention. And so now I'm here to ask you, are you taking responsibility for the way in which you're showing up? Are you giving appropriate weight to your actions knowing that their weight, that their impact might extend far beyond the space of the interaction itself? Are you responsibly wielding the power that you have as an inherent leader? Now, I myself used to be pretty avoidant of the word leader. I thought that that was a title reserved uniquely for extroverts and camp counselors and people who want to be bossy and not feel bad about it. I just thought that only some people were leaders and the rest of us were simply better at following and that being a leader meant that you needed to always have the answers and always take charge and be aggressively outgoing. But my two bakery strangers taught me that leadership isn't about your personality, it's about how you choose to show up among other people. How you choose to connect with others matters because people remember how you make them feel. I'm willing to bet that every person in this room has had an instance where a stranger has had an impact on them in some way. And so with that knowledge, what makes any of us think that we are not making that same impact on others every single day of our lives? This is what leadership is. It's taking responsibility for how you're showing up because you are impacting lives every single day anyway. And the implications of this go so far beyond simply performing more random acts of kindness, though so those are great too. This is quite a bit more profound than that. When you are more aware of your conscious and inherent leadership, 
then of course you want to be more honest when people ask you how you're doing because your vulnerability grants permission to the vulnerability of others. Of course you want to take responsible actions like recycling because what we're doing today is gonna to impact the lives of future generations. Of course you want to take full responsibility for the way in which you're showing up and how it impacts everyone around you because the example that you set has transformative potential. I had a friend reach out to me on Facebook recently, and this is a friend from college, and we really haven't kept in touch at all over the years. And he said to me, Kyla, I just want to let you know that I have always felt really bad about the time that I offensively used the word retarded, and you got really mad at me, and I just wanted to let you know that I've changed my word choice since then. And I told him, wow, you know, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> And he said, you don't remember this? We were, we were coming out of the main academic building on campus, we were standing on the stairs, we'd just come out of class, and, and you got really upset with me. I mean, you got really emotional. I can't believe you don't remember this. And so this is an instance that I wasn't even conscious of and still don't remember happening. Think of the additional leadership power that you have when you are consciously showing up for it. And when this starts to happen, you might start to see just how much potential there is in something as simple as speaking up when it feels important. And remember also that this power extends equally in the opposite direction and that a choice to not speak up, a choice to dull yourself down in order to make other people more comfortable, or a choice to give your power away to politicians and systems that you have the ability to change, all disconnect you from your inherent leadership and that that has implications far beyond yourself as well. Because leadership is never just about you. You affect the woman in the thick of body image issues, and the barista who hasn't seen a single person smile all day, and the boys and girls who are growing up in a world watching adults spend more time looking at their phones than at one another. I am standing here years later, telling you a story about two strangers in a bakery and how they changed my life by helping me to redefine leadership. What these two people did was not extraordinary. All they did was talk to a stranger and were likely unaware of how deeply they were affecting someone with their words and actions. Those two strangers are all of us. We are all exercising this power all the time. We are either moving the world towards becoming more disconnected or more empathic. We are contributing either to a plateau or to a revolution. And therefore, it is our obligation to show up as more conscious and intentional leaders in our everyday lives. Thank you so much.